Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the UFC card for tomorrow uh, from Vegas on uh, from a betting perspective. And as you guys have been following me for the last God knows how long now, uh, this is a very contrarian approach to wagering. Uh, it reflects the way I deal with all kinds of wagering markets, whether it be the MMA streets, the stock market streets, or any other streets where there's a VIG. <laughs> and you have to either be so good as to be better than a 30 cent line or be really good at at gauging where the public perception is and that the latter is where i excel it's been responsible for the overwhelming majority of my successes throughout the years um, in all forms of of investing such as this and as we've discussed mma is particularly suited to this type of analysis because the way uh, the way groupthink works in MMA is remarkable in that not only does the entire community start to gather around, you know, who they think is going to win, but they also completely settle on completely binary outcomes as far as how each fighter is going to win. By the end of the week, you have an incredible consensus on a very binary outcome. So either A wins this way or B wins that way. And what happens is, is that all the props and all the wagers that are uh, reflective of those takes by sort of almost by definition, but certainly in reality, get overbet and are completely unbettable. So what you have to do is figure out where the public is, where the public perception is, and realize that those particular takes are the ones that you cannot bet. And by, I guess by, by the way markets work in theory, Every other bet is kind of in play. So what we attempt to do is throughout the course of the week, kind of, you know, keep your ears open, figure out what people are saying, know who to listen to and know who who, who other people listen to. And this is, again, it's exactly the way I've been dealing with the stock market for you know, 20 years. Um, and usually by this time, by Friday, I have a really good idea of what people have completely agreed upon is going to happen. So we know what we cannot wager on. Um, last week was so brutal. We we had the main event down almost perfectly. We were on um, Gamrot in round two or round three. We were back and forth, back and forth at 22 to one. And we just clicked the wrong round. And uh, that was pretty brutal. Um, nonetheless, uh, here are the rules. Uh, we have all 11 fights and we are going to be betting uh, something on all 11 fights. And of course, that's not the best money management system in the world, but I don't care. Um, second of, secondly, we're going to be betting one unit on every fight. And for me, uh, one unit is $180. Uh, is it right to bet the same unit on every one unit on every fight? No, it's not the best money management system in the world. We, we don't care. Um, and I also do think it's healthy to announce what the amount that you're wagering is. Um, uh, I know people like to say uh, you one unit this, two units that. And I know it's for people, it's different money and stuff, but I don't know. I just think it's healthy for people to be transparent with what they're actually doing. So you're actually going to see me put these bets in while we're doing this. The other thing is that uh, we are usually quite contrarian. So what we do just to make this fun is the main event, we always bet something that is going to get all of our money back, presuming we lose every other fight on the card. So in this particular card, we're going to presume we're going to lose all 10 fights before that. So the main event, we have to bet on something that's going to produce at least 11 to 1. And that's how we had that 22 to 1 shot. That was oh, just so close um, yeah, last week. Okay, so let's just get started here. Um, and I haven't decided whether I'm going to go for ultra sarcastic approach or ultra serious approach. But nonetheless, we're going to come to the same kind of results here. So Montella De, Montana De La Rosa versus J.J. Aldrich. So this one is, this is like really, really easy. OK, because you have Montella, Montana De La Rosa, who has all the wrestling upside. You have J.J. Aldridge, who really is not that great, you know, uh, with her takedown defense. In addition to that, you have J.J. Aldridge, who just finally got her first finish in a completely set up fight. In other words, uh, Na Liang is was was agreed upon, which is terrible. And as a matter of fact, she beat Aldridge in the first round. So it was uh, it was a pretty actually a lackluster performance by Aldridge. Montana De La Rosa has the best has fought the better competition. She's that she's a dog. I love when people you know, town say, "Oh, she's a dog." I mean, she's much more aggressive. She's going to get after JJ Alter. JJ Alter is kind of stiff, and uh, and yet De La Rosa's 
minus only minus 140. And, you know, the way you're talking about this, she should be up at minus 500. So we're going to take JJ Aldrich plus the 124 for 180. Okay. Um, let's put this in here and, and then we'll do, we'll probably put it all at the same time at the end. All right, next fight, you have Kan Kanako Murata versus Vanessa Demopoulos. So what this is, is this kind of resembles every, this resembles a fight from two weeks ago, but they had an Asian fighter, female fighter who's off a long layoff, fight facing like this kind of American who's just kind of at the bottom of the, the bottom to mid level. And that was, uh, I forgot the Asian woman's name, it was against uh, Hannah Goldie. And, uh, uh, and uh, you know, the, 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 the Asian fighter looked okay, but it was a pretty, you know, decent decision or something like that. So what I've been hearing is that Murata is kind of the same thing. You know, she if she felt like wrestling, she probably has an advantage, but she just got her arm broke in arm broken in her last fight. So maybe she's going to be hesitant to do that, especially consider that Vanessa Demopoulos likes to be on her back. Um, and and, she, you know, she might be able to get an arm bar or something like that. So what this means is that essentially Murata by decision, which is the, kind of the cautious approach uh, to her to her uh, victory and Vanessa Demopoulos kind of by submission, both of those um, bets are, you just can't bet because those are really the ways that anybody sees this fight going either Murata, nice boring decision or Demopoulos kind of getting this submission. So we're just going to take Murata inside the distance here. Um, and let's just take a look. So winning method, Murata inside the distance, uh, win by TKO or submission plus three fifty. Wow. That's amazing. Murata is plus three fifty against. Okay, sounds good to me. All right. Um, okay, moving on. We have uh, Nate Maness versus Mateus Mendonca. Okay, so this one is is also sort of easy. Um, you have Mendonca, who's from the Shute Box uh, training facility, and 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 people love Shute Box. They love fighters from Shute Box. They love the hair from Shoot a Box. People like to even say Shoot a Box. Um, uh, so we're going to take Nate Maness. <laughs> That's the best I can do. So Nate Maness against Shoot a Box plus the 190 for 180. Ooh, look at this. Accept odds changes. Wow, you never get anything going for you here. Now, again, it's this is a, this is tough to fade these guys because all these Shoot a Box people, they just seem to always have the juice. You know what I mean? They just never, never stop, but I don't know. Th th this line has to be too wide. It just has to. All right. Um, moving on, we have uh, Aori Lang uh, versus Johnny Munoz Jr. Um. So the majority of the people here are on Uri Lang, but there's not a lot of consensus about how this fight's going to go. If anything, they're saying that maybe Munoz by submission. Um, so uh, if he wins... And Uri Lang, probably by decision or knockout. So those are probably the ways that we can't bet. We can't really bet Uri Lang. We can't bet Munoz by submission. The only thing we can really do here, I mean, if we don't want to be on the public, is either Uri Lang kind of by, I don't know, maybe Uri Lang by submission, maybe? Or just Johnny Munoz by decision? I don't think anybody's playing Johnny Munoz by decision. Um, so we're going to do that. And again, in fairness, this is not the fight where I have the biggest opinion. In other words, I don't think the public really settled on anything one way or the other here. So this is probably not the greatest, but we'll we'll do it anyway. Johnny Munoz by decision plus three fifty. Okay. Um, moving on, we have uh, Carolina Kovalkevich versus Diana Belbita. Um, so. Diana Belbita, she's she's 27 years old against Karolina Kovalkiewicz, who has finally got her career back in check. Um, and you know she used to be competing for the title, but but she went on a bad run. Then she took some time off, and now she's back. I mean, she she's got three straight wins. And here's the thing about Diana Belbita: she her big uh, deficiency is in her takedown defense, and Carolina has has some wrestling in her. So between Carolina's like high volume and Diana Belbita's kind of like poor takedown defense, not to mention that Diana Belbita is more of like a, 
I think people, she's more interested in her career as a model, I think, than as a as an actual fighter. So, I mean, Carolina Kovacavich has a, just much more experience. She has the style advantage, okay? And yet, all this money's been coming in on Belbita for no reason. So, we'll we'll play that. We'll play Belbita plus the 124 for one year. Okay. Okay. Uh, Alexander Hernandez versus Bill Algeo. Okay, uh, I, I I cannot help myself with this. Um, this is you know, pretty brutal. But I wasn't sure what I was going to do with this until this morning. Because people are making... Okay, so this, this is what, what I was sure of. That there were only two ways this fight could go. Alexander Hernandez finish in the first round. Or Bill Algeo take over a round two, three, or decision, okay? Alexander Hernandez has no cardio, okay? And Bill Algeo, uh, whatchamacallit, he was going to take over late. Um, then something really weird happened this morning. The entire line just flipped. Um, you had Algeo's maybe like a minus 130 favorite literally all week. And out of nowhere, like all the money came in at Alexander Hernandez. I mean, suggesting that that something is up here. Okay. Now, in situations like this, you know, um, what what I, I tend to do is kind of believe the, the market movement. Okay. So we are going to stick to what we were doing here. And we are going to play Alexander Hernandez. Um, but we are not playing him in round one. Okay. We are going to be playing him in either round two, round three or decision. And that's like a really tough one because, well, first of all, what's good about this is I don't think that those particular props have followed along the line movements. Okay. Um, so let's just take a look here. Hernandez round one plus 450. Hernandez round two plus 750. Wow. Hernandez by decision is plus 275. So that I think is the interesting one because you know no one believes that that he's gonna have the cardio win decisions. He either, either he's gonna win by KO early or Algio by uh uh late. So we're gonna we're gonna believe the line movement, but we are still gonna take the prop that is less uh that is less agreed upon by the public. So we are gonna play ooh. Is Hernandez by submission one is really interesting, a plus twelve hundred. But no, I mean, how how can you do? That? How can you play Hernandez by decision at two seventy five when you can get him by KO at two twenty five? Well, all the more reason why we're doing. It. That's got to be the worst, one of the worst bets we've ever done. But we're doing it anyway. All right, moving on. Uh, Philip Linz versus Ian Kutalaba. Here's another one, a pretty easy one to break down here. Ian Kutalaba is kind of a wild man, and he brings everything in round one. So he's either going to finish Linz in round one, or like you said, Linz is going to take over and either win round two or three like that, or a decision. So those are the things that you can't bet. The only thing we can really bet on here is either Linz round one, right, or Kutalaba by decision. So we're going to go for the Kutalaba by decision here. Um, and let's see what that is. Kutalaba by decision. Plus, oh, let's go. Plus 800. Oh, we like that. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's a lock. All right, uh, moving on. We have Drew Dober versus Ricky Glenn. <sighs> so here, here's something I want I want to consider, okay? I ne you know what, this is going to violate the rules, but I, I just want to just throw something out there for you guys. So people like to use MMA math a lot. They say if X, you know, beat Y and Y beat B, then X should beat B. And you compare, you know, like fighters against each other and things like that. So I want to suggest two parlays for you, um, which is not our normal modus operandi. But you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to add two things here. I'm going to add two $90 parlays. Uh, so Ricky Glenn, he fought 
uh what's his name he fought bobby uh not bobby green uh grant dawson uh a couple of fights ago and he was getting beat after two rounds and then the third round he beat the brakes off of dawson and was within an inch from finishing him and i want you to think of like kind of like the different the different uh you know realities here like let's just say that glenn actually got the finish and at the end of the fight you know it, um, dawson almost didn't stand up so i want you to think about this all right i want to scroll to this last fight as well so if he in fact got the win glenn first of all he would not be a plus you know two what is he plus 320 underdog to drew dober in addition to that, if he did not get the win, Grant Dawson would not be a minus 500 favorite in, in his fight. His fight. So what you could do is kind of like a, 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 an MA math parlay. And the two narratives is one, that Grant Dawson is not that good. And the second is that Grant Dawson is really good. So the idea is that if Grant Dawson is really good, okay, and, and that, then what we do is then we oh, then we can rate that Glenn draw really highly. And what we could do is you could do a parlay of Ricky Glenn plus 320 with Grant Dawson. Okay. Ricky Glenn with uh just just with Grant Dawson to win. Uh that's money line. We'd have to do that separately. Okay, so that actually, I you know, I don't do parlay, so I'm not going to do. It. But that's that is something you could do. So like, if if in fact you you know the Dawson is good, then the Glenn draw is good. So Glenn is probably good value this week. So you, you parlay Glenn with Dawson, and then on the other hand, if Dawson's not that not that good, then you could pair Dober right against Glenn with Bobby Green. So I think those make a lot of sense. All right? But uh, again, that that's not what we're doing here, so we are not going to do that. But what we are going to do is this. So um, we're going back to the Ricky Glenn, uh, uh, Drew Dober fight. And I just don't exactly quite get it. Uh, Ricky Glenn is coming off of a KO loss here. Um, and he looked really, really stiff. And, you know, Drew Dober has a tough chin and he's going to he's going to just knock him out. I, I just don't literally get this at all. This is almost like a sucker bet here, just begging me to do this. So I'm, I'm just going to take Glenn plus the 320. I don't know. I mean, one inch, one inch of finish. You know what I mean? Like if one more second, and Ricky Glenn is basically a favorite maybe over Drew Dover. So I'll, I'll take a shot. All right, um, mm, just a couple more, right? Joaquin Buckley versus Alex Morono. Um, all right, so Alex Morono is is clearly the most popular underdog on the slate here. I mean, I it, it's not only that, but they've already figured out how he's going to win. You know, he, he's either going to just outlast Buckley because Buckley tires, or Buckley goes for a takedown and Morono gets him in a submission. So what this means is that Morono by sub can't bet. Morono by decision can't bet. Basically, can't bet Morono anywhere. Um, the only person you could actually bet here is Buckley. And what what Buckley, what people are going to be playing Buckley to do is get the KO. Okay. Um, and so what we're going to do is the one thing that has a little bit of value here, and we'll play Buckley by decision. Let him go for those takedowns. And you know what? And just wrap them up. Uh, and just and just and just get the and just get the win that way. So Buckley by decision plus five fifty. Let's go. All right, moving on. We have Joe Pfeiffer versus Abdul Razak Hassan. All right, again, easy fight to break down. Uh, everybody kind of agrees what's going to happen here. Abdul Razak Hassan. I mean, if he gets this win, it's going to be round one. Okay, so you know what that means. You cannot bet. Abdul Razak Hassan round one. If you're going to bet Abdul Razak Hassan, you have to play him some other way, you know, by decision or something like that. Terrible value on uh, Razak Hassan there. Um, Pfeiffer, okay, um, he has, you know, he could get him out of there in round one, but more likely he's going to get there in round two, you know. Um, 
either round one or round two. But the thing is, is that Abdul Rasak Hassan has such terrible cardio that he's just never going to make it to the end. So that's what we're going to bet on. Heifer by decision plus 600. Okay. So here we are. We've made 10 atrocious bets here, and this is what they are so far. J.J. Aldridge, plus 124 against De La Rosa, who is a dog, who is a better wrestler, more physical. J.J. Aldridge is stiff coming off of, of basically the only fighter that she could be. This is ridiculous. Uh, Murata, an Asian fighter off of two years, just got her arm broken. You think she's going to get to, to, to do what it takes to get a finish off of that? No way. So plus 350, good enough. Uh, shoot the box. Can't bet against anybody from shoot the box. So we're going to lose this one, plus 195. Munoz by decision, honestly, there's just nothing else to do here. Uh, Munoz, you can't play by submission. Uh, and everybody was all over Ori, Ori Lang. So Munoz by decision, plus 350. Um, Kovalkiewicz, that lesson to Diana Belbita. Diana Belbita's terrible takedown defense, and she's going to know Carolina to take her down. So we'll take Belbita plus 124. Alexander Hernandez, we are not going to fade this money line that's been piling in. We're going to presume this is accurate. And we are going to play him, though, by decision uh, because he can apparently only he can apparently can only win this fight in round one. Similarly with Kutilaba. Kutilaba, round, you know, he's a round one or bust. So we're going to lose on him, plus 800. Uh, Ricky Glenn, plus 320. He just got KO'd in the first round by Yagos, who just was just terrible. Um, and Drew Dober's got that iron chin. Um, so uh, Ricky Glenn, plus 320, good enough for me. Joaquin Buckley, uh, he's kind of, again, pretty, the cardio wasn't great. Uh, KO, that was a KO or bust. But if he goes for those takedowns, it's a weird one where Morono will probably get the submission. So playing him by decision is probably pretty bad. So that's what we did. And Joe Pfeiffer, again, um, he's obviously, he's gonna be, look, he might get knocked out in the first round. But if he doesn't, he's certainly going to take over and win round two, maybe, maybe, um, Rock uh, Abdul Rasak Hassan will make it to round three, but that's it. So to play, for us to play him by decision is pretty nasty. So we're going to be 0 for 10. So we have to come up with something in this main event that's going to pay us 11 to 1 uh, that fits what we're trying to do here. And again, very kind of easy situation here. You have, you know, Grant Dawson is, is you know, he's, he's minus 500. And the reason why is because, or minus 400, is because he has an incredible style edge here. He's going to get these takedowns on Bobby Green and hold him down and maybe even get a submission, okay? Um, Bobby Green, I, I the only thing that people are saying is that Grant Dawson, the line is just too wide and that possibly there are cardio issues. So the problem here is that Bobby Green has just taken a lot of kind of uh, kind of a lot of money in the in the uh, in the Twitter sphere recently. I hear people saying it. You know, I'm taking my shot at Bobby Green. I'll take my shot at Bobby Green. The line is way too wide, and when you factor that in with the Dawson, maybe his cardio hasn't been tested. There's really only two things you can bet here. You can either bet Dawson in round four or Dawson in round five. So let's take a look. Oh, and here we go. Dawson in round four is 28 to one. Wow. Why don't we just, why are we being so difficult? Why can't we just play Dawson in round two? Why do we have to be such a pain in the neck? Well, fine. We'll play him in round three then. Dawson round three, plus 20 to one for 180 to get all of our money back. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to bet this while Zoom is running, but we will check. Ooh, let's see. Oh, no, it's got to gotta wait till we log off. But that'll do it. It should be a fun card. Uh, sorry if I, if I put you guys to 0-11, but hopefully at least you've learned about how to analyze these things, and hopefully it translates to how you analyze things like this and that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.